J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Radio City, New York, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Hooray for Hollywood. hardly seems possible, but it's true. Only 12 more shopping days till Christmas. 12 crowded days that will go by like the wind with so little time for planning or preparing your daily menus. Well, here's a helpful hint. Stock up on Jell-O tomorrow, for with Jell-O on your pantry shelf, you can win that race with the old clock. Jell-O dissolves instantly, sets quickly, and offers you dozens of delicious desserts prepared in next to no time. It tastes just grand served perfectly plain in any of those six delicious flavors. Or you can dress it up with different canned fruits for a touch of quick and easy variety. Just be sure to get genuine Jell-O when you buy. For Jell-O brings you that delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. A rich, full-flavored goodness that simply can't be topped. So for ease, speed, and swell things to eat, ask your grocer for Jell-O. Orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who came to New York in the middle of winter without an overcoat and still hasn't bought one, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, the holdout talking. And Don, I wish you'd stop harping about an overcoat. I told you last week I don't need one. I know, Jack, but it's dangerous to walk the streets this kind of weather without a coat. After all, this is winter. Don, believe me, cold weather doesn't bother me. I'm just naturally rugged. <laughs> well, I was the first fellow in Waukegan to ever get a haircut in the middle of December. <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> well, that may be so, Jack, but I still think that you're not dressed warm enough. Why, Don, it hasn't been so cold this week. As a matter of fact, it's been raining most of the time. Then why don't you buy a raincoat? Listen, Don, are you selling clothing or Jell-O? <laughs> Jell-O. Then stick to it or I'll fatten up Graham McNamee for your job. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's drop it. Well, I think Don's right, Jack. You look silly walking down the street dressed the way you are. Oh, I do, huh? Yeah, why, for $60, you can get a beautiful overcoat with Pat... notice it. Well, look at them now. Look at those three violinists in the front row. You think Congress had just passed a law against Bors. <laughs> you know, Don, I can't understand why Phil had a... Oh, now they laugh. Boy. The reason they're laughing now, Bors is the first word they understood. <laughs> You know, Don, I can't understand why Phil had to pick out an orchestra that works for Fred Allen. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Maybe they're worried about something. Maybe they're serious musicians. Serious? Last Wednesday night, all Allen said was, hello, Porty, and those guys went into hysterics. Well, maybe maybe they jumped their cue. You nearly jumped yours. Yes, yeah. now. <laughs> That's probably what happened. Now, you know, I don't mind Alan telling him when to laugh and applaud. But when he throws lighted matches around to get them to stamp their feet, that's going too far. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Applecart. What upset you now? Oh, it's that smart Alec orchestra Phil had to ring in on me. I wish you'd just ignore him, Mary. <laughs> you haven't been out with any of the boys in this band, have you? Only the brass section. Oh. I like fellas with derbies. Oh, good. Well, stay away from the woodwinds. 
But by the way, Mary, I thought you were going to meet me the other night for dinner and go to a show afterwards. Jack, I've told you a thousand times I'm not going out with you until you buy an overcoat. Oh, you're as bad as Don. I told you I don't need an overcoat. This blue suit keeps me plenty warm. It ought to. You got your gray one under it. <laughs> Oh, was that darn thing showing again? <laughs> anyway, you missed a wonderful treat. I saw that new Olson and Johnson review. Oh, if they got a show here, what's the name of it? It's called Hex a Poppin'. <laughs> Hex a Poppin'? Yeah. Not the night I saw it. Go away, Phil. <laughs> Just say, Mary, you missed a grand evening's entertainment. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I went over to visit my folks in Plainfield that night. They're having trouble with the landlord again. Hey, that's been going on for years. Mary, your father's working. Why doesn't he pay the rent? Oh, he says everything belongs to the Indians anyway. Well, the least he could do is give the landlord a string of beads. <laughs> the only thing I can't understand, Mary, is how your family keep from being thrown out. Thrown out? My folks move so often, Mama wears a gypsy costume. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess some people are just naturally restless. Yeah, we even had to change our dog's name from Fido to Rover. Mm, nice family. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? <laughs> I just got a letter from Mama that'll positively kill you. Well, it's about time. What's the Noel Coward of Plainfield got to say? <laughs> Here it is. Oh, this is a riot. Well, never mind the buildup. Just read it. Okay. Huh? <laughs> My darling daughter, Mary. Uh, just a line to let you know how happy your visit made us. And to tell you that you left a pair of gloves here on the piano. That was careless. They fit me fine, but I will send them to you immediately. If that's the way you feel about it. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, it's lucky you left when you did. I think your sister Lulu has the mumps. As she was blowing up a balloon yesterday, and when she stopped, her cheeks wouldn't go down. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Right now, she looks like a tuba player getting ready for a high note. Say, it's a good thing you got away from there. By the way, Mary, your grandfather is at it again. He may be old, but he certainly follows the latest style. I remember the old geezer. This morning, when he came into breakfast, he was wearing his beard up. <laughs> he was. Say, with his beard up over his face, he must have trouble eating. Mama's coming to that. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Uh, we had chicken soup for lunch today, and you should have seen your grandfather looking for a noodle in the haystack. <laughs> Old gal's cooking tonight. Any other bulletins? Uh, no other news, except your cousin Otto is in trouble with the police again. Now what? They caught him on a ladder the other night, and he wasn't eloping. <laughs> That's right. You can't take silverware to Niagara Falls, huh? That's all for now. Give my love to the gang and hope to see you before you leave. Your devoted mother, Gypsy Rose Livingston. <laughs> Wow. Uh, P.S. It's only two weeks to Christmas, so give my love to Jack, too. <laughs> well, that's very sweet of her. What a racketeer. Now, let's get on with the program. Oh, Kenny. Hey, where's Kenny? He's supposed to sing right now. I don't know. Oh, I remember. Kenny borrowed $10 from me and said he was going out to see the World's Fair. The World's Fair? That doesn't open until spring. He'll wait. Darn that kid. Well, if we can't have a song, I'll have to play a violin solo. A violin solo? <laughs> Get back in your seats, man. That's what I say. Hand me a violin, Phil. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Can't we talk this over? I know what I'm doing, Phil. Let go of me. Hey, boys, do you know uh, At Long Last Love? No. How about my reverie? No. no. Fine orchestra. Hey, piano player. Yeah? Do you know when it's tulip time in Holland? I think it's in April, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, never mind. They'd probably ruin it for me anyway. Well, as long as we have to do without Kenny, play something, Phil. We've got to get going here. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm awfully sorry you're not going to play a violin solo tonight. You are? Well, so am I. But who are we, the people? <laughs> get out of here. Be glad when the beaver season opens. I'd like to bag him. <laughs> But I'm not the type to care Cause I've got old pocket full of dreams It's my universe Even with an empty purse Cause I've got that pocket full of dreams 
wouldn't trade the wealth on Wall Street for a road where nature tries. And to calculate I'm worth my weight in the golden rods. Lucky, lucky me, I can live in luxury. Cause I've got that pocket full of dreams. But I'm not the type to care Cause I've got that pocket full of dreams It's my universe Even with an empty purse Cause I've got old pocket full of dreams Wouldn't trade that wealth on Wall Street For a road where nature drops And to calculate I'm worth my weight In the golden rod Yeah, man! Lucky, lucky me I'll go on in livery Cause I've got old pocket full of dreams. That was Pocket Full of Dreams, played by the orchestra with a vocal refrain by Phil Martinelli. <laughs> and now... <laughs> Now, I know why you didn't want me to play my violin, Phil. It was just so you could do a number yourself, you big ham. Well, what if I did? Don't be so jealous. I'm not jealous. If I couldn't sing better than that, I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> me jealous. Why should I be? I got more money in the bank than you have. Haven't I, Mary? You've got more money in your socks than he has in the bank. <laughs> Mary, if you're referring to that bulge above my shoe, I was getting out of the bathtub this morning and I sprained my ankle. Well, you've got Lincoln's picture on the bandage. All right, Mary. Anyway, that's what happened. Bathtub? What were you doing in the bathtub? I was sailing a boat. Oh. <laughs> what was I doing in the bathtub? What do you think I was doing? Diving for pearls? <laughs> what? Or my laundry? That could happen. Now, wait a minute, I, Mary. I shouldn't even discuss it, but I don't do my own laundry. Well, someone should. <laughs> All right, just keep it up, fellas. Just keep it up. So, when I do my Christmas shopping, I'll remember every word that was said here. Now, hold on a minute, Jack. Have I ever said anything to hurt your feelings? No, you haven't, Don. Have I ever said anything that would cause you a moment's unhappiness? No, Don, you haven't. Here it comes for Have I ever said anything except that Jell-O is economical, easy to make, and comes in six delicious flavors? Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. No, Don, and I admire you for it. <laughs> to prove my faith in you, I'm going to let you handle the show from now on. Where are you going, Jack? Well, I've still got a lot of Christmas shopping to do, and I thought I'd finish it up today. You can handle things around here, can't you, Don? Oh, sure, Jack. Go right ahead. Can I go with you, Jack? Yeah, because if I leave you here, you're liable to say something about me. All right, I'll go with you and say it. Hey, there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Come on, Don. I'll see you. Go. I, we're going ahead. I'll see you later. Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Oh, well, it's about time. We've been in town ten days, and it's the first I've heard from you. Where are you? I'm up here in Harlem enjoying a little southern hospitality. <laughs> oh, well, you know, Rochester, even though we're in New York, you still have work to do. I thought this was a pleasure trip. Pleasure trip? I've had to unpack my own bags, answer the phone, and do everything myself. You expect to get paid this week, don't you? Definitely. <laughs> I thought so. What have you been doing? Well, last Wednesday night, some friends of mine threw a big banquet in my honor. Oh, did you have a good time? I don't know. It ain't over yet. <laughs> it ain't over yet? Well, for heaven's sake, how long is this party going to last? Until somebody with a blue coat knocks on the door with an axe. <laughs> 
Well, I don't mind you having a good time, Rochester, but in case things get dull there, I wish you'd drop around and press some pants for me. Okay, boss, I'll be there tomorrow. Fine. Oh, incidentally, uh, when I unpacked my bags the other day, I couldn't find my full-dress suit. You couldn't? Mama! I'm not asking for sympathy, Rochester. Where is my full-dress suit? You mean the one you look so good in? Stop flattering me. Rochester, where is my full-dress suit? Why don't you wear your tuxedo? Now, Rochester, for the last time, where is my full-dress suit? Well, I'll be doggone. I got it on. I thought so. Of all the brazen, unmitigated nerve, how dare you put on any of my wardrobe? How dare you? Are you disappointed in me, boss? <laughs> disappointed? Now, listen to me, Rochester. Yes, sir? I want you to be at my hotel at 8 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Shall I come formal? <laughs> yes, bring the suit. Goodbye. So long, boss. Well, that's positively the last word in nerve. Play, Phil. I got to go out and do some shopping. Come on. <laughs> like playing Notre Dame. Yeah, everybody's shoving and pushing. Ooh, ooh! Madam, will you please watch your umbrella? <laughs> hmm. You better stick close to me, Mary, and don't get lost. And take your hand out of my pocket. Not my hand. Then whose is it? Well, for goodness... Hey, buddy, what are you doing with your hand in my pocket? I don't know. I guess I'm an optimist. <laughs> hmm, let's get away from here, Mary. Now, let's see. Here's my Christmas list. An electric razor for Don. A necktie for Kenny. A chorus girl for Phil. <laughs> and, uh... What are you going to get for me, Jack? I'm not going to tell you, Mary. It's a surprise. It's something between a Rolls Royce and a compact. <laughs> I'll bet the last will be first. Oh, I don't know about that. Remember last Christmas I gave you that lovely bottle of perfume? Fine perfume. I put some on my handkerchief and had to bury it. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. Incidentally, I have to buy some. I wish you'd help me pick it out. Okay, here's the counter, Jack. Oh, yes. Uh, pardon me, miss. Uh, I'd like to get a bottle of perfume. Yes, sir. Now, here's something new this season that's very popular. Well, well, what an attractive bottle, isn't it, Mary? Yeah. Uh, what's the name of that, miss? It's called Springtime in the Bronx. <laughs> oh, yes, it's lovely that time of year with the bagels all in bloom. <laughs> but, miss, look, I'd like something a little more exotic. Uh, something, shall we say, uh, ooh-la-la? Oui, oui. Well. Now, here's a perfume that's all the rage in Paris. It's called Toujours L'Amour Voulez-Vous. <laughs> 
Well, well, toujours l'amour, voulez vous uh, What does that mean, Mary? Love, your magic smell is everywhere. <laughs> Well, it sounds much better in French. Uh, uh, how much is that, miss? Ten dollars an ounce or four thousand dollars a gallon. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's a little steep. Uh, let's see. What else have you got? Now, here's something very nice. It sells for three dollars and a half a bottle. Say, hey, that's quite a bargain. Who makes that? Hague and Haig. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that won't do either. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Gee, miss, I don't know what kind of perfume to buy. Why don't you just run some violets through a ringer and make it yourself? <laughs> well, of all the impertinence... Come on, Mary, I've got a good mind to report her. Well, it's not her fault, Jack. She's busy. Busy? Yes, when you spend that much time with a girl, you either have to buy something or marry her. Oh. Well, come on, I've got to get some neckties for Kenny. And stick close to me, Mary, you'll get lost in this crowd. Hey, Jack, there's that fellow again. Where? Ouch! Buddy, will you please keep your hand out of my pocket? I'm sorry. Sorry? You're the clumsiest pickpocket I've ever met. Well, I'm young yet. <laughs> And stay away from me until you loin something. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, where's, the, uh, where's the necktie counter? Uh, there's the floor walker, Jack. Ask him. Oh, yes. Uh, pardon me, mister. Good afternoon. What can I do for you, sir? I'm uh, looking for ties. Uh, where can I get a good dollar necktie? I'm afraid you better ask somebody else. Why? I work here. I'm prejudiced. <laughs> Nevertheless, I... I'd like to find the necktie department. Where is it? Neckties. Now, let's see. That wouldn't come under crockery, would it? No, it comes under chin, if I remember. <laughs> now, look, mister, I haven't got all day. Where can I buy a tie? Well, you don't have to get huffy about it. I'm not huffy, you big dope. Oh, go back to Hollywood and squeeze an orange. <laughs> Now, look here, hey, you. Hey, Jack, there's a necktie department right in back of you. Oh, that's right. Fine floor walker. He's a disgrace to his carnation. <laughs> Fine floor walker. He's a disgrace to his carnation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are. Well, well, there's... Quite a selection here. <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like to buy some ties. Four in hand, bow, or railroad. <laughs> Look, I want a necktie. A regular necktie. I'm glad to hear that. The one you're wearing is awful. <laughs> well, it is a little wrinkled. Now, here's a very snappy tie, mister, with an American flag on it. Oh, yes. Take it, Jack. It'll go good with your white shirt with the stars on it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it is unusual, uh... How much is this tie with the flag on it? Sixty-two dollars and fifty cents. Sixty-two fifty? Yes, Betsy Ross made it. <laughs> For heaven's sake, what is this, a store or a museum? I don't know. I always come in the back door. <laughs> well, that settles it. I'm getting out of this joint. Wait a minute, Jack. As long as you're here, why don't you buy an overcoat? I told you before, I don't need one. You do, too. I do not, and take your hand out of my pocket. And come in quicker. Good heavens, you're getting monotonous. <laughs> All right. Come on, Mary, I'll buy that overcoat just so you'll keep still. Where's that silly floor walker again? There he is, right over there. Oh, yeah. Say, mister, I hate to go through this again, but can you tell me where the overcoat department is? I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make up with you either. <laughs> Come on, Mary, I'll find the overcoats myself. You better carry some of these bundles, honey. I'm loaded now. Rochester. Oh, hello, Mr. Billy. You shopping too? Yeah, I thought you were up at Harlem at a banquet. I was, but I ran into some money with a pair of dice, so my girlfriend brought me down here to liquidate. <laughs> oh, I see. Boss, I'd like you to meet Miss, uh, Miss Lucille. Lu uh, what is your last name, honey? Garbo. 
Oh, Lucille Garbo. How do you do? Glad to know you, Mr. Benny. Rochester's been telling me about that big oil well you two own. Oil well? What oil well? Uh, come on, honey, let's go. Rochester. Uh, see you later, boss. Oil well? Wait till I see him tomorrow. Oh, Jack, I found the overcoat department. I've got one all picked out for you. Look, it, I'll pick out my own. Where is it? Come on, I'll show you. Now, Mary, while I'm buying my coat, you can run along. You don't have to stay. I wouldn't miss this for a million dollars. All right, but I don't want any remarks. Here's the salesman. Isn't he cute? Oh, so that's it, huh? How do you do, sir? Uh, how do you do? Uh, I'm Jack Benny, and I'd like to buy an overcoat. I see. Oh, Joe? Yeah? Come over here. I'm going to need help on this. Okay, Mr. Peters. <laughs> hmm. Now, what have you got in mind, Mr. Benny? Uh, well, I'd like to get... Now, here's a very popular model. All wool, double-breasted, and wears like I am. Well, it's nice, yeah, but I'd just rather... try it on. I'm sure you'll like it. Uh, look, I, I don't care for the color. Try it on anyway. Hold him, Joe. I got him. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There you are, Mr. Benny. A perfect fit. A perfect fit? Absolutely. Now, do you want the sleeves lengthened, or are you going to wear gloves? <laughs> Now, look, mister, I don't like this coat at all. In the first place, it's too long. Look, when I move, it drags on the floor. Not if you walk on your toes. <laughs> well, that's about the silliest thing I've ever heard. It looks marvelous on you. Marvelous? I've been in shower curtains that fit better than this. <laughs> now, look here. I don't like this model at all. Take it off. All right. I don't like the weight, and I don't like the color. But it's only $29.50. Put it back on, fellas. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. I don't want this coat at any price. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, try it on again. This coat will grow on you. Grow? I could raise pigeons in it now. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Brown, I don't now, want... Now, just slip it on again. <laughs> look, but I don't like I this... got him, Mr. Peters. Hey, what's the matter with you guys, anyway? There you are. Now, how do you like it? I don't like it. Look at this coat. There aren't even buttons on it. Of course not. This is the new zipper model. Look. <laughs> there you are. Mary, let's get out of here. These fellas are maniacs. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You look like a guy peeking out of a sack of potatoes. Well, I've just had about enough of this. I'm going home. Unzipper me. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. All right, Jack. Oh, no, you don't. Grab him, Joe. All right, got him. Out of my way, you. Out of my way. All right, Joe, let him have it. <laughs> ha, ha, you missed me. What a sore loser. Oh, Jack, he shot me right through my new hat. Well, no wonder. It looks like a wild duck. Good <laughs> heavens, what a mess. <laughs> you ever get the feeling that you simply can't think of anything different for, to have for a dessert? Well, cheer up. There's always something new, and here's one good suggestion for tomorrow. <laughs> it's the delicious new Jell-O butterscotch pudding prepared with ten creamy marshmallows cut in quarters and folded inside. Good? Ah, you bet it's good. Satin smooth, rich, and mellow with a golden brown color as tempting as taffy, and a taste that's luscious with true butterscotch flavor. Then try the new Jell-O vanilla pudding. It's creamy and delicate. Fresh tasting and smooth, for it's made with real vanilla. You'll find that it's an all-family favorite and it's wholesome and nourishing. Then there's Jell-O chocolate pudding. Just like old-fashioned homemade pudding, rich and chocolatey, made a quicker, easier, better way. For all three Jell-O puddings are delightfully simple to prepare. The quick, easy directions are in every package, together with some interesting recipe variations. Buy three packages at a time. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O butterscotch... Vanilla and chocolate pudding. This is the last number of the 12th program of the new Jell-O series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, <laughs> California. And, uh, folks, I want you all to know that I was only kidding before. I really have an overcoat, haven't I, Mary? Yes, but the elbows are out. <laughs> of course, that's why I didn't wear it. Good night, folks. <laughs> J-E-L-L-O. Tonight's music included FDR Jones from Sing Out the News. This is the National Broadcasting Company. K-F-I. J-E-L-L-O. 
The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Goody Goodbye. <laughs> You know, this coming Friday is the first official day of winter, and during the dark, blustery days ahead, you'll find nothing lights up the dinner table like the gay glint of orange jello served as a bright, tempting salad or dessert. But suppose you live in Florida or sunny California, where you don't have to worry about dark winter days. Well, orange jello is still your dish, for its cheerful color reflects the sunshine, and its extra rich flavor rivals the tempting goodness of the real ripe fruit itself. Or try a tempting sea green mold of lime jello served with slices of canned pineapple. Or uh, what would you say to lemon jello, as golden as sunshine, with stewed figs and whipped cream folded in to make a delicious creamy fig pudding? Why, there are dozens of grand ways to serve jello, each one a creation that will climax the meal. So stock up on jello tomorrow and look for the big red letters on the box when you buy. They spell jello in six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. That was Goody Goodbye, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you our worn-out master of ceremonies. Between his broadcast at NBC, his picture at Paramount, and his Christmas shopping at the 5 and 10, he's the busiest little man in Hollywood, Jack Benny. Thank you. Hello again, this is Tilly the Toiler talking. <laughs> And, Don, you're right. I don't ever remember being as rushed as I've been this past week. I'm a wreck. I can appreciate that, Jack. You know, when I got home last night, I was so exhausted, I didn't have the energy to go upstairs. I slept all night on the billiard table. My goodness, you must have been tired. I I was, Don. I rolled and tossed and tossed and rolled till almost daylight. Restless, huh? No, I forgot to take the balls off the table. I didn't mind that so much, but Rochester charged me 60 cents an hour. It's his table. (laughs) Belongs to him, you know. (laughs) What a night, huh? Well, if you're tired, Jack, it's your own fault. Radio keeps you busy enough. What are you making a picture for? That's what I can't figure out, Don. I can't understand Paramount putting me in another picture so soon. I'm not tired of my last one yet. (laughs) I've seen it so many times, I won eight Plymouths. Anyway, I'm making another one now Well, uh, Jack, tell me something about your new picture Is it a light, sophisticated comedy like Man About Town? Oh, no, Don, this is a western A real rip-snorting melodrama Full of action and thrills Well, that's a surprise How did they happen to cast you in that type of story? Well, you see, uh, Gary Cooper isn't at Paramount anymore And they seem to think that I'm the one to take his place Uh, What was that, Jack? I said, Paramount seems to think I'm the only one at the studio that can take Gary Cooper's place. Well, so long, Don. See you later. (laughs) Mary, come back here. There's nothing ridiculous about my playing parts like Gary Cooper. What are you talking about? In the first place, Gary Cooper's better looking than you are. Well, a little makeup will take care of my looks. And he's younger than you are. Mary, makeup will help me there, too. And he's a great actor. Put some mascara on that. (laughs) Listen, my critical friend, I can play those strong Western types, too. I can talk through my teeth just like Gary Cooper. What do you mean, your teeth? (laughs) Mary, possession is nine points of the law. (laughs) Anyway, wait till you see the picture, young lady. You'll change your mind. (laughs) Say, Jack, is Phil Harris in this one, too? Yes, Don, he's in it, but I can't understand why. He must have something on the director. (laughs) I wished I knew it was what, what it was. I'd like to get some more lines. I'd like to get that one straight. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll just snoop around, you know. Well, how is Phil in it, Jack? Has he got a pretty big part? You'd think so to see him strut around on the set. 
He's such a ham, Don, and yet he tries to be so democratic. Uh, what do you mean? Well, he's got a sign on the back of his chair that says, Phil Harris, never too busy to say hello. <laughs> Isn't that corny? Well, Jack, I guess that's just his way of being a good fellow. I know, Don, but it's so hammy, all those words on there. Now, all I got on the back of my chair is just Jack Benny, and right under it, a simple little star. <laughs> Why overdo it? Well, anyway, besides Phil, there's Ellen Drew, Ward Bond, Andy Devine, and, oh, yes, uh, Rochester's in the picture. I forgot. You'll remember when it comes out. <laughs> Listen, Mary, I'm the hero. That's good enough for me. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Gary. Gary? And I do mean Indiana. Pretty sharp, eh? <laughs> oh, that was a honey. How long did it take you to think that one up, Phil? Came to me like a flash. All my stuff is impromptuous. <laughs> That's impromptu. And incidentally, Phil, I wish you'd stop telling everybody at Paramount that you're playing the part of my son. It's not true. Besides, it takes away from the romance. Some romance. I read the script, and in the end, Jack marries a cow. That's cowgirl. <laughs> you'd have turned the page, you'd have seen the word girl. Anyway, this is radio, so let's forget about pictures. We can talk about something else. Hey, Jackson, as long as we're changing the subject, how about paying off that bet you welched on? What bet? That bet we made on the USC-UCLA game. Come on, pay off. Phil, I'd pay off if I owed you anything, but that game was a tie. Sure it was a tie, but you took USC and gave me seven points. I don't care if I gave you 50 points. The score was nothing to nothing. That means I get nothing and you get nothing. <laughs> now get your band together and play a number. I don't want to interfere, Jack, but if you gave Phil seven points, he won that bet and you ought to pay him. Certainly you ought to pay him. Why, well, of course. Oh. All right, Phil, all right. Here's a quarter. Now leave me alone. Oh, what a guy. Thanks, Jackson. Here's your change. <laughs> Thanks. Now go ahead and play, you sore head. Next time I gamble with you, I'm going to have it in writing. of the kisses played by a miser and his orchestra. <laughs> miser, Phil, meaning a man who thinks more of 15 cents than he does of my friendship. And now, ladies and gentlemen... All right, if that's the way you feel about it, Jackson, here's your money back. It's not the money, Phil. I just don't think I lost that bet. You don't think you lost on Hoover. <laughs> Mary, I conceded that months ago. <laughs> We're talking about the football game. The trouble with you is you don't know anything about gambling. You're just a poor sport. I'm a poor sport. That's a hot one. For your information, Phil, I had an uncle who was one of the most famous gamblers in Waukegan. Why, he'd bet $1,000 on the turn of a card. I bet he was an uncle by marriage. <laughs> no, his name was Benny. Stand back, you bother me, boys. Benny. Keep that 15 cents, Mr. Small Fry. <laughs> and now, and now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, Jack, uh, don't forget about, uh, uh, you know... I'm coming to that, Don. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Christmas being just a week off, <laughs> Mr. Don Wilson, that eminent American author, has written another of his famous one-act plays. Take it, Don. The time, ladies and gentlemen, is the night before Christmas. The scene is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus at the North Pole. 
Mr. Jack Benny will be Santa Claus. Yes! <laughs> Never mind, Mary. With a beard, no one will know the difference. Go ahead, Don. The North Pole. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Oh, Santa, Santa. What do you want, Dad? You better get started pretty soon. The reindeers are all hitched and everything. Well, I got a few more letters here, and I got to see that the kiddies want before I put my bag in the sleigh. I'll help you. Here's a letter from Encino, California. It's from a kid named Philip Harris. Tear it up. But Santa, he says he's been a good little boy. Good little boy? Why, last Christmas I got to his house around 5 a.m. and he was just getting home. Not only that, he threw snowballs at me. There's no snow in Encino. He didn't know it. <laughs> well, what does little Philip want from Santa Claus? 14 points in Tennessee. <laughs> well, he'll never get it. Oh, Santa, here's a letter from Rochester Van Jones, Jr. in Central Avenue, California. Hmm, Rochester Van Jones. What does he want? He says, Dear Santa, please send me a sled, a pair of roller skates, and a bottle of gin. Well. P.S. If you haven't got the sled and the roller skates, no hard feelings. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Any more kitties to be heard from? Yes, here's one from Jackie Benny, Beverly Hills, California. Well, 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 little Jackie Benny. He's a cute kid. What's the little rascal got to say? He says, Dear Santa Claus, have been a good boy all year, so when I give a party Christmas Eve, will you please send Clark Abel and Carol Lombard, Robert Taylor, and Barbara Sandwich, her own Let's Clark see and... that letter. Says nothing of the kind. Well, goodbye, darling. It's getting late, and I must be going. Can I go with you? That's fine. I got one night out a year. My wife wants to go along. <laughs> nothing doing. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Oh, Santa, just one more thing. What is it? When you get Dan Sheridan's house, just fill her stocking and get. <laughs> Oh, don't be so jealous. Goodbye. Goodbye. Who can that be? Uh, come in. Special delivery for Santa Claus. Right here, boy. Well, it's from little Tubby Wilson, 834 Blimp Avenue, Van Nuys, California. What does he say? He says, Dear Santa Claus, I have been a good boy all year, but I don't want a sled and I don't want roller states. Just give me some jello in all 60 wishes favors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, women, and wine. Well, yours truly, Cuddles Wilson. <laughs> well, there's the first kitty I'm going to take care of. So long, honey. I'll be home in the morning. Okay, and stay away from the Wilshire Bowl. I will. <laughs> Goodbye. Get up, you reindeer. <laughs> Come on, Donner! Giddy up, Blitzen! Buck Santa rides again! Don, Don, that was marvelous. That's one of the best plays you've ever written. Uh, I thought you'd like it, Jack. And by the way, uh, what did you think of that surprise finish when I asked for Jell-O? Oh, Don, it was such a shock. I never expected it. Hmm. And now, folks... <laughs> Gee, I knew what he was getting at all the time. Oh, hello, Dennis. I didn't hear you come in. Well, my shoes don't squeak anymore. <laughs> well, Dennis, uh, I don't want to rush you, but uh, Don's play reminded me I still have a lot of Christmas shopping to do, so go ahead with your number and I'll run along. Can I go with you, Jack? I've got some stuff to buy, too. Sure, come on, Mary. Oh, Don, you and Phil take care of the rest of the program, will you? Sure, Jack, we'll carry on. Here's a Lulu, folks. When I was in Asia, I slept in an attic. Darn those Asiatics. <laughs> Phil, where are you? heaven's sakes. Stop with those 1912 Thunderbolts. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. I'll see you next week. Okay. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, could I speak to you a minute? Of course, Dennis. What is it? Well, it's a little personal, and I'd like to talk to you in private. You can tell me right here. What's on your mind? Well, Mr. Benny, my mother... Uh... Yes? Go Gee, ahead. I don't know how to say it. Go on, Dennis. Don't be bashful. Well... My mother told me to ask you, when are you going to start paying me for singing here? <laughs> oh, well, that's strange. I take care of you every week, don't I, Dennis? Yes. But, gee, we've got enough jello now for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, well, look, Dennis, you go back in and sing your song. I'll think it over. I wish you would. Our house is so full of boxes, we can't walk around. Well, just leave it to me and everything will be all right. Come on, Mary. His mother burns me up. She hasn't even paid me for her Christmas cards yet. Oh, well. <laughs> and now, folks, Dennis Day, our young tenor, will sing a beautiful number called Tomorrow Night. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> A thousand and one delights And you are saying This is a night of night And while I'm holding you here In the soft moon glow There's only one thing I give the world to know thrill be gone Tomorrow night Will this be just another memory Another song That wouldn't linger on Tonight your lips are tender your heart is beating fast You willingly surrender For starting will it last Tomorrow night Will you be with me when the moon is bright And will you say The things you said to store is crowded, everybody doing their Christmas shopping the last minute. Stick close to me, Mary. Here, I'll take your arm. Let go of me, you masher. <laughs> oh, pardon me, miss. It's so crowded here, I thought you were someone else. Oh, tell that to the Marines. <laughs> I don't even know any. <laughs> Mary, where are you? Here I am, right behind you. Who's your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. Well, you tried hard enough, Gary. <laughs> I said I was sorry, miss. Now, stay close to me, Mary. Have you got my Christmas list? Yes, here it is. What does it say? Uh, dear Jackie boy, I waited for you in the owl drugstore last The list night. is on the other side. <laughs> Read it. Uh, wait a minute. Who's Gladys? She's the pin girl at the bowling alley. You've seen her a million times. <laughs> now, give me that list. Let's see. I got to get some perfume for my sister, a watch for Don Wilson, and I got to take care of Phil, and I got to get something nice for Dennis. I know what Dennis is giving you, Jack. What? A pair of socks. A pair of socks? What a little tightwad. Bet that kid's got the first box of jello he ever earned. <laughs> well, I'll get Don's present first. I wonder where the watch department is. Let's ask the floor walker. Yeah, there's one. This must be him. Uh, pardon me, are you the floor walker? Yes, I'm the floor walker. What do I look like? A telephone booth? <laughs> Well, how do I know? You haven't got a carnation on. I had one, but I ripped it to pieces. (laughs) 
Now, listen, buddy. Just tell him what you want, Jack. Listen, buddy, if it won't tax your mentality too much, will you please direct me to the watch department? No, I won't. <laughs> well, if you don't tell me where it is, I won't buy a watch. What do I care? It's not for me. Well, it's the last time I'll ever come to this store. Oh, Jack, there's the watch counter right over there. You stool pigeon. <laughs> a guy. I don't know how he holds his job here. Come on, Mary, give me your arm. Hey, you let go of me. <laughs> oh, it's you again. Will you stop following me around? Well, I thought that... It's no use. I'm engaged. <laughs> well, I pity the fella. <laughs> Come on, Mary. She thinks I'm trying to make a date with her. You've done worse. <laughs> Here's the watch counter. How do you do, sir? Can I help you? Yes, I'd uh, like to look at a watch, please. Bullover, pullover, schmullover. <laughs> Just a watch, a man's wristwatch. Well, let me see. Now, here's our new Venus de Milo model. No hands on it. <laughs> no hands on it? Well, how do you tell time? Call Ulrich, 8900. <laughs> Well, that's too complicated. I'd like to get something a little more practical, you Oh, know? Jack, I'm going over to do my own shopping. See you later. Okay. Now, here's a very smart clock, and it's only $25. A clock? Well, I really wanted a watch. But this is a real bargain. Yesterday, this same clock sold for $1,250. Well, my goodness, how could you afford to cut it from $1,250 to $25? We took the Buick off. <laughs> Oh, it was in a car. Well, I'd just like a wristwatch, please. Oh, here's, here's something cute. How much is this one? Ten dollars. Well, that's just what I want. I'll take it. Here's your money. Thank you. Hey, this is beauty, all right. Huh? It certainly is. And you know it has that new unbreakable crystal. Here, try it out. No, no, I'll take your word for it. Go ahead. Take this little hammer and hit it. Oh, all right. <laughs> Wrap it up? You mean sweep it up. <laughs> and give me back my $10. I'm sorry. You'll have to see the floor walker about that. What? Oh, Mr. Chambers. What is it, Miss Kelsey? <laughs> this man broke a watch with a hammer, and he wants his money back. Well, certainly I broke the watch, but she told me to. She told you to? Yes. Well, haven't you got a mind of your own? <laughs> certainly I have a mind of my own, but this young lady told me it was unbreakable. Young? Why, she's 42 if she's a day. <laughs> We're not arguing about that. <laughs> I want my ten dollars back. Oh, give it to him, Miss Kelsey, before he bites somebody. <laughs> yes. Here's your money. Boy, what a sore loser. <laughs> Certainly a fine store to do business with. You walked in, Sugarfoot. Nobody dragged you. <laughs> oh, quiet. Now, where the Dickens is Mary? Your daughter is over there at the hosiery counter. She's not my daughter. <laughs> More trouble buying a little watch. What's Mary buying? I like this shade. I'll take a half a dozen pair of those two-thread hose. You're wrong, lady. This hose is three threads. Oh, no, it's two threads. I beg your pardon, but it's three threads. Listen, sister, don't argue with me. Not so long ago, I was standing right where you are. <laughs> That's telling her, Mary. Oh, hello, Jack. You got a watch for Don? Yes, but I broke it with a hammer. It's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go over to the perfume counter. Okay. Shall I wrap up these stockings, miss? Yes, I'll be back later. Oh, by the way, who's pitching for your softball team now? Mary, you can talk shop later. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Mary, here comes that girl who thought I was trying to flirt with her. Yeah. Watch me have some fun with her. Hello, sweetie pie. Out! Here, Mary, hold my coat. Oh, Jack, you're in a store. Lucky for her, believe me. Hmm. Here's the perfume counter. I see it. Uh, pardon me, sir, I'd like to buy some perfume. Okay, mister, what kind of perfume would you like? <laughs> well, I don't know... Uh, what's, uh, what's popular right now? Well, now, here's something that's exotic, yet you can smell it a mile. <laughs> oh. It's 
called Lamaua Tujawa Lamaua. <laughs> well, let me see that. Hum, it, it does smell lovely. It ain't bad to drink either. <laughs> I really, I really don't care how it tastes. You see, I'm, uh, I'm buying it for my sister. Oh, is she on a wagon? <laughs> no, she just doesn't drink perfume. She's eccentric. <laughs> Anyhow, it has an exquisite scent. How much is this? Two clams a slug. <laughs> oh, that's reasonable enough. Do you think I ought to take a bottle of this, Mary? Certainly. Mary. <laughs> well, wrap it up, and I'll drop by on my way out. Okay, pal. Oh, by the way, I don't want to seem impertinent, but uh, how does a fellow like you happen to be selling perfume? I'm the only mug in a joint that can speak French. Oh. Well, we'll see you later. Goodbye. Au revoir, pal. <laughs> hmm, quite a character. Let's see, uh, what's next on the list, Mary? You got to get something for Phil and Dennis. Yeah, let's walk over to the necktie department there. Oh, Jack, look. What? There's Rochester buying some neckties. Oh, yeah, and that floor walker's waiting on them. They sure are busy here. I'll bet Rochester's getting a tie for you. Let's sneak up behind him. Well, I think this tie is beautiful. It's very unusual. Yes, but I don't think my boss would like it. It ain't his style. I see. Well, what type of man is your boss? Well, he's kind of tall, medium weight, and rather conservative. You mean he's conservative in appearance? It goes deeper than that. <laughs> Well, at least he's subtle. Quiet, I want to hear this. Now, here's a rich-looking tie. Maybe he'd like this one. Yeah, that's a pretty thing. How much is it? It's only $3.50. How much? $3.50. Too bad he'd have liked that one. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, if you don't want to spend quite so much, here's a lovely tie for 89 cents. 89 cents? That's right. The deal is practically closed. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Of course, it may be a little too plain for your boss. Is he a young man? No. Is he middle-aged? No. Is he elderly? Wrap it up. <laughs> Rochester Van Jones. Oh, hello, boss. I didn't see you. I know you didn't. And don't be buying me any 89-cent ties. You keep out of this. I will not. This fellow works for me. Now, look, Rochester, you've been with me three years now, and I've been very nice to you. I've always tried to make things pleasant for you and keep you happy. Is that open for discussion? <laughs> no, it isn't. Now, I'm leaving you here at this necktie counter, and I want you to decide for yourself whether or not I'm worth more than an 89-cent tie. Come on, Mary, let's go. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mary, which tie do you think Rochester's going to buy me? The one for three fifty or the 89-cent one? Well, if you were Rochester, which one would you buy? I'll fire that guy. <laughs> Play, Phil. <laughs> They say, ladies and gentlemen, that it isn't good manners to point. But there really is one time when it is all right, and that's when you see Jell-O butterscotch pudding on your grocer's shelf. Every day, thousands of discriminating housewives make this new dessert a regular part of their marketing. And they serve it often because it's an all-family favorite, with its rich, buttery, brown sugar goodness and its tempting, deep golden color. Served with nuts, fruits, marshmallows, shredded coconut, or with just a big dab of snowy whipped cream, Jell-O butterscotch pudding is absolutely tops. And the same goes for Jell-O vanilla and chocolate puddings. So add these three brand new, grand new desserts to your menu often. You can serve them time and time again in a variety of delightful ways with no risk of tiring the family's taste. Tomorrow when you're at the grocer's, just point to Jell-O puddings and watch them point the way to a real treat. We're a little late, so good night, folks. This is the National Broadcasting Company. The Jell-O Program, coming to you from the Ritz Theater in New York City, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Turkey. <laughs> Turkey. 
You know, friends, a lovely shimmering mold of jello on the table has a wonderful way of lending luster to a meal, just as Christmas trees and candles, tinsel and holly lend their own special gaiety to this merriest of merry seasons. Even the simplest family dinner takes on extra charm and attractiveness when the high point of the meal is a grand jello dessert. How inviting its shining colors look and how intriguing its rich, tempting flavor tastes. No other dessert can add more to the spirit and pleasure of any occasion. Because no other dessert can outrival Jell-O's glistening beauty and refreshing goodness. So, ladies and gentlemen, decide now to add a new note of festive delight to your meals during the holiday season. Tomorrow, ask your grocer for Jell-O and any of Jell-O's six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. By the way, strawberry and raspberry Jell-O both have a new improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And the result is a rich, distinctive goodness rivaled only by the juicy, ripe fruit itself. A unique flavor that cannot be duplicated in any other way. Try a grand treat made with genuine Jell-O and you'll realize right away why Jell-O is America's favorite gelatin dessert. was Tookie played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there being just two more shopping days till Christmas, we bring you that fugitive from Gimbel's basement, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, speaking of Gimbel's basement, I never saw so many women shopping in my life. I got shoved around like a blintzer in Lindy's. <laughs> Boy, what a mob. Pretty hectic, huh? Hectic. You know, Don, I can understand my derby getting caved in, my muffler torn, and the sleeve of my coat ripped off. But how I lost my pivot tooth, I'll never <laughs> know. <laughs> that was really an experience. <laughs> oh, I can just imagine what you must have gone through. You know, a funny thing about women, Don, all year long they're so helpless. You have to open the door for them. They can't light their own cigarettes. They cling to your arm as you walk down the street. They're as delicate as butterflies. And then, about two weeks before Christmas, a mad glint comes into their eyes. And with an umbrella for gouging and a handbag for slugging, off they go. Come on, girls, let's mangle the mail. That's their battle cry. Well, Jack, women are a little excitable when they're shopping around Christmas time, but I don't think they're as tough as you say. Oh, you don't, eh? Don, I was in Macy's yesterday afternoon, and a little gray-haired lady, couldn't have been over five feet tall, put down her cane and yanked a washing machine right out of my arm. <laughs> I tried to get it back, and she kicked my hat off. <laughs> Imagine. My goodness, Jack, you don't mean to say that a little old lady took a big washing machine away from you. Don, I wouldn't have minded that so much, but it was a demonstrator. I'll probably never get my laundry back. <laughs> that is my own fault, I guess, for waiting so long to shop. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, doll. Doll? Well, look who's so affectionate around Christmas. You're certainly giving out with that soft soap. Oh, no, I'm not, Jack. You're not, eh? Then why did you call me doll? Because your hair is glued on. <laughs> All right, all right, young lady, that did it. There goes that mink coat I was going to buy you for a present. You were going to buy me a mink coat? Yes, I were, or was. <laughs> I was going to buy you a mink coat. I bet it were, or was, from Rabbit. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. You've lost a very beautiful gift. And you, know, and you know the kind I hand out. Go on, you wouldn't buy Hedy Lamar a Coca-Cola. For Christmas? What are you talking about? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Mary. A girl like Hedy Lamar could make a playboy out of me. I'd buy her quarts of bubbling champagne. You'd buy cider and put an Alka Seltzer in it. <laughs> All right, keep it up, keep it up. There goes Don's Christmas present, too. Hey, wait a minute, Jack. I didn't say anything. Oh, pardon me, Don. I got a little mixed up there. Watch out, Don. He's laying for you. No, I wouldn't forget about Don's present. Not after the way he laughed at the premiere last Tuesday night. How'd you like the picture, Don? Oh, I really enjoyed it, Jack. I got a big kick out of it. I laugh like anything. Sorry, Mary. The mink coat is over the dam. 
Anyway, Don, now that you've seen Love Thy Neighbor, what do you think of Fred Allen in it? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack... I mean, don't you feel... <laughs> don't you feel that I get much bigger laughs than he does? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I think you're very good in the picture and so is Allen. The honors are mm. equally distributed. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Mary. <laughs> then, Don, in your fat-headed opinion, <laughs> you think Allen goes over as good as I do. Exactly. You both have a lot to do in the picture, you both photograph well, and you both get big laughs. Well, we both don't pay your salary, so start leaning my way. <laughs> Imagine saying we photograph equally well. That's ridiculous. Jack looks much better than Alan. Why, certainly. And Alan, you can have. <laughs> Mary, one more crack out of you, and you'll be saying, oh, my goodness, I left my baby in the automat for Olsen and Johnson. <laughs> Remember that. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Well, old pal, you got nothing to worry about. I got your Christmas present bought, packed, and ready to hand over. Oh, so you've been shopping too, eh, Phil? You said it. All day yesterday, one store after another. Well, did the women kick you around much? Yeah, but I got it coming to me. <laughs> Said it. You know, Phil, I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to buy your present yet. Uh, what did you get for me? I ain't saying. You'll have to wait till Christmas. Oh, come on, Phil. Tell me. All right, Jackson, I'll tell you what I bought you. Remember that camel's hair overcoat we saw in the window on Fifth Avenue? The one you were so nuts about? Yeah. Well, I got you a box of nuts. <laughs> oh, well, Phil, unless you're kidding... When Mary is in the audience stooging for Olsen and Johnson, you'll be in the lobby trying to get out of a straitjacket. <laughs> Catch on? The way I've been going the last few nights, a straitjacket wouldn't be bad. He's not fooling, folks. <laughs> you know, Phil lives on the 18th floor of the St. Moritz Hotel, and he never uses the elevator. He just goes in and out the window. <laughs> Now, Phil. Yeah? It's about uh, a little quicker on the yeah. You know, when I say now, Phil, you come right back. Yeah, there's no laugh when I say now, Phil, you know. Yeah. It's about time for a band number, so let's have it. What are you going to play? I don't know. This bunch don't speak English. Oh, fine. Well, don't worry about it, Phil. Just pick up your baton and follow him. Go ahead, kid. <laughs> was Jingle Bells, played by Phil Harris and his Central Park troubadours. Uh, troubadours meaning they are traveling musicians, and Central Park meaning they ought to get a room tonight. <laughs> that joke went over better the first show. It shows you we should change for the night show. <laughs> what a gang you picked up here, Phil. Huh? Well, music is just a sideline with these boys. I know, and I wish you'd tell the drummer to stop pestering me. I've got all the potato peelers I need. 
Those guys sell everything from razor blades to mink coats. Ha ha! <laughs> what are you all hoeing about? Fink, the fiddle player, has wonderful <laughs> mink. <laughs> I saw him. Hello, Mr. Benny. Uh, hello, Dennis. Boy, am I a wreck. Women, women, nothing but women. <laughs> Oh, have you? Have you been shopping, too? No, I just came from Roseland. Oh. oh, ten cents a dance, eh? Yeah, I cleaned up. <laughs> Say, Dennis. Dennis, I hear that you and Kenny Baker have been stepping out and seeing the town together. Is that right? Yeah, and you know what, Mr. Benny? What? The other night, I made him pay for everything. I stuck him for $2.45. You did? Well, now, Dennis, that's not very nice. If Kenny is kind enough to show you a good time, the least you can do is go 50-50. Or better still, pay all the expenses yourself. It's all right to save money, Dennis, but there's nothing like being a good sport. <laughs> What's that for, Miss Livingston? Everybody else knows. <laughs> You see, Dennis, there's only one way to be popular. When you're out with a fella and he reaches for the check, you take it first. And if he should pick it up, you grab it right out of his hand. Grab it. I can't stand this. <laughs> Mary, come back here. Okay. What's the matter with you? Dennis is just a kid, and while he's still young, he's got to be taught how to conduct himself in public and not be a cheapskate. I don't understand you, Mr. Benny. No, you don't? <laughs> I don't understand you, Mr. Benny. You don't understand. Well, look, Dennis, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> Dennis, we'll go out for a bite to eat after the broadcast, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll pick up the check, and you take it away from me. <laughs> See? Then I'll take it away from you, and then you take it away from me. Then what? That's all, bub. <laughs> Mary, I warned you. Cut it out, kid. Say, Jackson. Yes, Phil? My band member's over, and I still got a lot of Christmas shopping to do. Do you mind if I run along? Why, no, Phil. In fact, I think I'll go with you. There are a lot of things I got to get myself. Don, you can take charge of the rest of the program, can't you? Oh, sure, sure. Don't worry about it, Jack. Come on with us, Mary. I want you to help me pick out a few things. Okay, but don't embarrass me. I won't. You know, there's a swell store near my hotel, the Sherry Netherlands, where I can buy almost... Wait a minute. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Hello, Miss Livingston. This is Rochester. Oh, boy, are you going to get us? Jack, it's Rochester. Rochester. <laughs> Give me that phone. I'll find out right now where he's been for the past two weeks. Hello? Oh, boss, what happened to you? Where you been? <laughs> where have I been? I've been on the phone for the last ten days trying to reach you. I call every hot spot in Harlem that's got a telephone. At the hot ones, you can't hear it ring. <laughs> Rochester, I don't want any flippancies. I want the truth. Now, we arrived in New York a week ago Thursday. The 12th, they tell me. <laughs> yes, the 12th. It is now December 22nd, just three days before Christmas. Happy Yuletide, boys! Never mind that! <laughs> What I want to know is, what became of the time between December 12th when we got here and December 22nd, which is today? Well? Well? Well, on Friday the 13th, I was right up to the door of your hotel, ready to go to work. Uh-huh. And just as I was about to enter, a black cat ran across my pants. I see. Well, couldn't you walk around the cat? I did and wound up at 125th Street. <laughs> Oh, well, so much for Friday. Now, what happened on Saturday and Sunday? I weekend ended up to Harlem. Up a Hudson, that up is. The Hudson. Take it again. <laughs> How did I know when he's on the other side of the telephone? Okay. Well, we'll get to Monday. I must be psychic. 
Then we'll get to Monday. After your weekend, Rochester, why didn't you call me at my hotel? I was so full of sherry, I couldn't think of Netherlands. <laughs> Now, don't give me that. Look, Rochester, I haven't any more time to argue with you. Where are you calling from? Uh, what's that, boss? I said, where are you right now? Just a minute. What's the address here, Sugar? 31 Lennox Avenue, honey. 31 Lennox Avenue, honey. <laughs> Rochester, who are you talking to? Susan Brown, the sweetest gal in town. Oh, yeah, I spoke to her last week and left a message for you. Did you get it? Just a minute. Honey, did you give me a message from Mr. Benny? Why, Rochester, you knows I did. She forgot to give it to me, boy. Oh, she forgot to give it to you, eh? Yeah, she's as dizzy as a blonde, but it can't happen here. I see. Now, Rochester, I want you to go over to my hotel right away. That made up for the one you muffed. I want you to go over to my hotel right away. There's a lot of work to do, and it's got to be done before tomorrow. Yes, sir. Now, how soon can you get over there? Just a minute, boss. Say, Sugar, I don't think I'll be able to take you to the Savoy Ballroom tonight. Oh, that's all right, honey. I'll get somebody else. You better not get somebody else. I ain't going up there alone, Rochester. I want somebody to snuggle up to. You get somebody to snuggle up to, and it'll be your last snug. <laughs> Rochester. And I do mean last. You threaten me, Shorty, and I'll cut them $9 out of your hip pocket. <laughs> Rochester, answer me. I want you to come right over to my hotel. Leaving right away, boss. So long. Goodbye. Now, listen, sugar. Don't make any dates. I'll run over to see Mr. Benny, put on the old personality, and be back here in a half hour. Rochester, you forgot to hang up. Uh-oh. Oh, oh Rochester. <laughs> Yes, boy. I heard your conversation. Don't you believe it? Get over here. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm in the same trouble with that guy every time I come to New York. Come on, Mary. Let's go shopping while I'm mad. Yeah, that'll hold you down. Let's go, Phil. Right with you, Jackson. All right, Dennis. Let's have your song. Oh, 
house. Stick close to me, Phil. You too, Mary. I don't want you to get lost. Okay, Papa. Hmm. Are you going to take us to see Santa Claus, Daddy? <laughs> Pipe down, both of you. Got to have some system here. Now, let's see my Christmas list. I got to buy a compact or something for my Aunt Molly. A lawnmower for Dennis. <laughs> a Mickey for my writer. <laughs> Let's see. A deck of cards for Simney. Let's see. What else here? Gee, look at that crowd of women at the bargain counter. Where? Oh, boy, what a mob. See you later, Jackson. I'm going over and mingle. See you later. <laughs> Gosh, I wish I knew what to get for Aunt Molly. Mary, I wonder if she could use a lipstick. Has she got lips? What do you think? <laughs> she got lips. Here's a counter. Here. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, I'd like a lipstick, please. Oh, come now. <laughs> Look, it's not for me. I'm buying it for my Aunt Molly. I see. <laughs> a lipstick for your Aunt Molly. That's who it's for. She lives in Chicago on LaSalle Street. What number? <laughs> I don't know the number. Oh, you don't know the number, and yet you want to send a lipstick to your Aunt Molly. I'm not going to send it. I'm going to take it to her. I'm going to stop off in Chicago on my way to California. Oh, I suppose you're the only one that ever went to California. <laughs> what are you talking about? I live in California. I got a home there. Well, I've got a home here, but I don't brag about it. I wasn't bragging. Now, look, mister, all I want is a lipstick. Am I going to get it or not? Sorry, I've decided against you. <laughs> Next case, please. Guy isn't screwy, then I don't know why. More trouble over a lipstick. Mary, I ought to go over to the grocery department and get Don a case of Jello. He'll love it for Christmas. And why don't you get two cases so you can fill a stocking? I'll get all the six flavors. That'll do it. And Mary, while we're in the store, I think I'll buy a collar button. I need one. Yeah, your Adam's apple ain't practical. <laughs> it's just an emergency. I lost the button. There's the men's department over there. Pardon me, could you tell me where I can buy an evening gown so I should look like Lena Turner? <laughs> <laughs> Miss, that's Lana Turner. Lena, Lana, I'll never make it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Miss. I'm Jack Benny. I'm not a floor walker. I saw your picture. Get ready. <laughs> She looks like Babe Marks. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's get that collar button. <laughs> I haven't got much time. You'd have plenty of time if you stopped flirting with that girl. Who was flirting? She thought I was a floor walker, didn't she? Well, you didn't have to roll your big blue eyes at her. Mary, just because my eyes happen to be large and devil may care is. <laughs> Don't have to accuse me of flirting. Here we are. Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like to buy a collar button. A collar button? Yes, sir. Now, here's a nice one for $85. $85 for a collar button? Yes, that includes dress shirt, tie, socks, patent leather shoes, <laughs> and a double-breasted tuxedo. Well, that's a good buy, all right, but all I want is a collar button. Sorry, we never break up a set. <laughs> well, now, that's ridiculous. You know, mister, I've shopped in every city in the United States, but I've never been in a store like this. I tried to buy some lipstick a few minutes ago. Lipstick? Oh, come now. <laughs> it sounds silly, but I had a good reason. And the salesman at that counter insulted me. Oh, Jack, look. What is it? Look who's over there at that counter. Where? Right there. Isn't that Kenny Baker buying a camera? Well, sure enough, it is Kenny. Let's go over and say hello. <clears throat> Gee, miss, this camera looks swell. I think I'll take it. How much is it? Three dollars. Three dollars? Gee, Dennis would like it all right, but haven't you got something for 55 cents? <laughs> well, yes, but I thought you wanted to spend three dollars. I do, but he's already hooked me for 245. <laughs> oh, Kenny. Hello, Kenny. Huh? Oh, well, well, I'll be doggone. Hello, Jack. How are you, Mary? Gee, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> Gosh, Kenny, I haven't seen you in a long time. Gee, you're, you're getting to be a big boy now. I sure am. You want a cigar, Jack? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look, Mary, he's got a whole pocket full of cigars. Yeah, I had them left over from Wilkie. <laughs> oh, 
fine. Same old telly. How about a little kiss, Mary? Okay. Hmm. Big boy, all right. Cigars and everything, huh? All right, kids, break it up. <laughs> Come on. Wow, he has grown up. Say, that was a real kiss, huh? Personally, I'm a wreck. <laughs> well, pull yourself together. Come on with us, Kenny. You can buy your camera later. I want to talk to you. Okay. I'll see you later. I've got to buy some hose. All right. So long, Mary. Say, Kenny, how do you like your new job? See, that Fred Allen is pretty tough to work for, isn't he? No, he's swell. We get along great together. Oh. <laughs> but I'll bet you don't have as much fun as you used to have on the old Jello show. Gee, you remember all the laughs and good times and everything? Yeah. But I'm having a wonderful time with Fred. Ah. Gee, talk about laughs. Say, he's a riot. Is that so? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, Jack? Mr. Allen pays me every week. <laughs> hmm. He does, eh? Yep. Pays you every week. Huh? Yeah, none of that see me later, kid stuff. <laughs> Well, you must have a pretty short memory, Kenny. I used to have that envelope for you every week, too. Yeah, but with Mr. Allen, I don't have to play treasure hunt. <laughs> oh, well, good, clean sport. Never hurt anybody. Say, Kenny. Yes, please? Oh, fine. <laughs> Say, Kenny, I just happened to think of something. Remember the time you first came to work for me and I invited you over to the house for a Thanksgiving party? <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget how bashful you were. You remember I asked you if you wanted to have some more turkey? Yeah, and I was so darn nervous I said yes. Oh, that turkey wasn't so bad. Have you got much left? <laughs> Same old Kenny. Gosh, I'll never forget the time. Kenny, remember when it was Halloween and I didn't know you were in the backyard? Yeah. All of a sudden, I heard a noise at the window, and there you were. <laughs> Wasn't that funky? I sure was, <laughs> Thanksgiving and Christmas are two days out of the year when it's fairly easy to decide on a dessert. Because you can figure that most families will be looking ahead to mince pie, pumpkin pie, or plum pudding. But during the rest of the 365 days of the year, choosing a dessert is always a problem. And that's where General Foods' new calendar of desserts comes to your rescue. This handsome recipe book gives you a different dessert inspiration for every day in the year. Between its bright, attractive covers, you'll find 365 suggestions for all kinds of delicious treats, profusely illustrated with beautiful color photographs. There's page after page crammed with mouth-watering pictures and descriptions of clever dessert dishes, pastries, puddings, cakes, and cookies, not to mention lots and lots of grand jello desserts. A flip of the page brings you a new and tempting dessert idea every day, and it's easy to get, too. Just mail 10 cents in coin or stamps to Jack Benny, care of General Foods, Battle Creek, Michigan, and a copy of the calendar of desserts will be forwarded to you at once. Send for yours today. Merry Christmas. See you Wednesday, Miss Benny. How often do you lie awake at night, ladies and gentlemen, listening to the ticking of the clock grow louder and louder and louder? And how often would you avoid that wakefulness if you drank Sanka coffee instead of ordinary coffee? Sanka coffee permits sleep because it is 97% caffeine-free. And Sanka is real coffee at its delicious best. Start drinking Sanka coffee tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 